The mystery of how Spinosaurus lived is one of the most hotly debated topics in modern paleontology. This iconic sail-backed reptile has a fascinating history, and the realisation that it might have been a specialised aquatic dinosaur makes this animal even more intriguing. However, the idea that Spinosaurus was an underwater pursuit predator that would fully submerge to chase down its prey is not accepted by all scientists, and disagreements between two main factions of paleontologists have led to an academic bloodbath known as the Great Spinosaurus War. Well, that's what I'm calling it anyway. So, was Spinosaurus really a swimming dinosaur, or did it live more like a heron and other wading birds, standing about in shallow waters and plucking out its prey from above? Let's look at the evidence that's been argued for both cases. Spinosaurs have been known about for more than a century, with Spinosaurus itself being named based on fossils found in Egypt in 1912. Towards the end of the 20th century, a few more Spinosaur species were discovered in Europe, South America, Asia and other North African countries. But it's in the 21st century when Spinosaur research has really taken off, with numerous new species named in the last decade. I'm actually planning another video doing a deep dive, pun intended, on the complete history of Spinosaurus research from its discovery to the modern day, so keep an eye out for that at some point soon. Our understanding of the biology and appearance of Spinosaurus has undergone a dramatic change in this time. The animal went from being reconstructed as essentially just a generic looking, upright standing theropod with a big sail on its back, to the croc-like head, horizontal standing version made popular by Jurassic Park 3, and then in 2014, it all changed again. Based on more remains of Spinosaurus uncovered in Morocco, paleontologists proposed a new reconstruction for this species in which it had relatively short back legs, had an M-shaped sail, was quadrupedal on land, and was specialised for a semi-aquatic lifestyle. Spinosaurus and Spinosaurs more generally had already been suggested to be somewhat aquatically inclined before this 2014 research, as they had conical teeth perfect for catching fish, and their very crocodilian-like skulls had been observed to have retracted nostrils and possible pressure sensors in the snout, leading scientists to think they may have partially submerged their snouts to sense the movements of fish, while still being able to breathe. Plus, evidence from the oxygen isotope ratios of their bones examined previously also suggested semi-aquatic habits. The 2014 paper, led by paleontologist Dr. Nizar Ibrahim, added to this evidence with the reinterpretation of the animal's body shape, suggesting that they were suited to not only standing in shallow water or on a riverbank and dipping their jaws in the water, but would fully submerge and propel themselves with their hind feet. The robustness of the back leg bones and the presence of large attachments for muscles meant that these would have been powerful limbs, and the toe claws were also noted to have flat bottoms, which is a similar condition to that seen in some modern shorebirds with webbed feet. The long bones of the limbs and the elongated spines were also shown to be very dense in cross sections, so they may have acted like ballast to keep the animals submerged and not constantly bobbing up to the surface. This amazing skeletal reconstruction made by Wonder Artistic Models shows the idea of how this version of Spinosaurus would have looked and walked, with a centre of mass further forward along the body from its hips and forelimbs that would have contacted the ground, meaning that this animal would have essentially knuckle-walked, sort of like a gorilla or chimpanzee. It's also got that M-shaped sail favoured by the Ibrahim et al team, although it has been argued that the sail shape might be different as it depends on where the tallest neural spines on the vertebrae are located, and interpretations of their positioning do differ. This is when the Spinosaurus Wars truly began. The publication of that 2014 paper created waves in the paleontological community, and almost immediately other researchers began to fire back at this new interpretation of Spinosaurus. Various blog posts by other researchers questioned whether the proportions of the hind limbs were actually scaled correctly, and pointed out that Spinosaurus doesn't seem to have forelimbs particularly well suited to weight bearing questioning if it really would have been quadrupedal on land. Additionally, the fact that the new reconstruction was based on fossils from several different specimens cast some doubt on how accurate the overall proportions were. Since the 2014 paper, all researchers involved have pretty much abandoned the hypothesised quadrupedal mode of life for this animal, as it seems very unlikely based on the anatomy of Spinosaurus's claws and forelimbs. This alternate reconstruction by Wanda Artistic Models depicts Spinosaurus as a more upright, bipedal animal. This depiction of the species is the most plausible one for how Spinosaurus would move about on land, considering that the quadrupedal knuckle-walking hypothesis 
is no longer considered likely by most researchers. This version also has a different sail shape, which as I mentioned, is another of the disagreements in the Spinosaurus debate, since different researchers argue that the spines are arranged in different ways, producing varying sail anatomies. The first major shot fired back at this research in the scientific literature took place in 2018, when another paleontologist created a digital model of Spinosaurus, taking into account soft tissues and air sacs that would have been present in life, and investigated how it would perform in the water. The results of this study found that Spinosaurus floated with its head clear of the water, much like other theropod dinosaurs did anyway, and therefore suggesting it wasn't especially well adapted for an aquatic lifestyle. It was also found to be unsinkable, with its system of air sacs and air spaces in the bones making it too buoyant, and it seemed to be unstable when at the water's surface, tending to roll over onto its sides. In addition, the centre of mass of Spinosaurus was found to be over the hips, instead of just in front of them as had been found in the 2014 paper. This implies that it would still have been bipedal and didn't need to use its arms to walk on land. All of this was therefore taken to indicate that Spinosaurus was not a specialised swimming pursuit predator, but would have been suited to a heron-like mode of life, hunting for prey along the shoreline or standing in shallow waters. But then, in 2020, Nizar Ibrahim and colleagues returned for another round of scientific battle, with the publication of their paper describing the tail of Spinosaurus. More excavations at a site in Morocco that preserves a partial Spinosaurus skeleton had uncovered a good deal of the tail revealing that, like the very long neural spines of the vertebrae in the back, the tail vertebrae also had long spines along the top, as well as long projections called chevrons on the underside. These long spines result in a tail that looks very much like a giant newt's tail, and the paleontologists conclude that it was used as an aquatic propulsive organ to move the giant predator through the water, similar also to how crocodiles swim. Testing this idea with a robotic apparatus modelled to the shape of the tail, they found that undulating the tail from side to side did indeed produce significant thrust. This third skeletal reconstruction created by Wanda Artistic Models shows Spinosaurus in swimming mode with its newt-like tail. These elongated neural spines plus the chevrons underneath create a very deep tail, and if it was indeed this flexible, then it does seem like it would have been ideal for underwater propulsion. Coupled with its hind feet that had flattened claws and which might have had webbing between the toes, Spinosaurus seems like it would have been a powerful swimmer. But then in 2021, a different pair of paleontologists published another paper assessing all the data on Spinosaurus that had been gathered up to that point, and came to the conclusion that the concept of Spinosaurus as a heron-like wading animal was much more plausible than its being a specialised aquatic pursuit predator. In their interpretation, the newt-like tail is considered to actually have functioned as a social and or sexual display structure, similar to the tails seen in modern basilisk and sailfin lizards. Although, as the paleontologists themselves also note, these modern lizards do also swim very well, but the sails on the tail are generally kept clear of the water so likely don't function to improve their swimming abilities. This 2021 paper again points to the stability and submerging issues of a swimming Spinosaurus as evidence against a pursuit predator lifestyle, and suggests that these dinosaurs were limited to lunging attacks in shallow waters. Following this, 2022 saw the publication of more evidence from Nizar Ibrahim and colleagues, again supporting Spinosaurus actually being a swimmer. This work looked at numerous bone cross-sections from a wide variety of living and extinct animals, arguing that the relationship between the density of bone and aquatic habits can be used to show that Spinosaurus, as well as the European Spinosaur Baryonyx, were subaqueous foragers, meaning they were specialised for hunting underwater. This research found that Spinosaurus and Baryonyx's increased bone density supported their swimming ability and helped to control their buoyancy. The density of their long bones was observed to be much greater than in most terrestrial theropods and to look more similar to other subaqueous foraging animals, such as caimans and the extinct Nothosaurus. However, other Spinosaurs, such as Suchomimus from Niger, were found to be non-divers, and interpreted as being suited to standing in shallow water to catch prey. But, of course, this didn't remain uncontested for long, and towards the end of 2022, other paleontologists published a paper concisely entitled, Spinosaurus is not an aquatic dinosaur. This study, which includes the author of the 2018 paper that created the digital model, used another, more detailed digital model of Spinosaurus made from CT scans of the known skeletons, as well as a digital model of Suchomimus. 
they again added in details of internal air spaces and soft tissues, and once more tested its performance in the water and on land, finding that it was bipedal while standing, and was an unstable slow surface swimmer in water that was too buoyant to dive. They also favoured the interpretation of the newt-like tail as some kind of display feature rather than a propulsive organ. Plus, they also suggested that the distribution of Spinosaurus fossils found in Africa indicates that it ranged far inland, following ancient inland waterways rather than being found only along the coast, which they argue undermines the specialised underwater predator hypothesis, since all big-bodied secondarily aquatic animals with terrestrial ancestors became adapted for marine life whereas ones that live in freshwater habitats had marine predecessors and are generally smaller bodied. Things like river dolphins, for example. They therefore favour the heron-like ecology for Spinosaurus, inferring that this giant dinosaur would wade about in shallow waters and lunge at fish while standing, but would not dive to hunt. In March of 2024, many of these same authors then got another paper published, this time directly responding to the bone density paper and criticising their methods and interpretations. They found problems with the classifications of exact lifestyle used in the example living and extinct species, inconsistent inclusions and exclusions of certain species, and what they say is an inappropriate choice of the species used. They also criticised the statistical method used to conclude that Spinosaurus and Baryonyx were aquatic, finding that it has low accuracy when applied to the dataset. This research did not, however, specifically aim to add new data to the Spinosaurus ecology debate, and is more of a criticism of the way the bone density study analysed their dataset. Still, it again concluded that currently the best interpretation of this dinosaur's lifestyle is as a semi-aquatic wading animal and not one that would dive to pursue prey. Plus, they argued that the high bone density values of the Spinosaurus bones are likely not because they functioned as ballast to keep the animal submerged, but are simply related to supporting the large body mass of the animal as it walked around on land and in shallow waters. But, just in case you thought this was finally the end of the Spinosaurus debate so far, there's actually already a response by the authors of the Bone Density paper that's been posted as a preprint online, meaning it's not yet been properly reviewed and published, but the authors have made their unedited response available to read. In this response, the paleontologists argue that the other paper ignored major details of the study and misrepresented their methods. They therefore maintain that the critiques and the digital model data do not undermine the Spinosaurus as a subaqueous forager hypothesis. So that's pretty much most of the Spinosaurus controversy summarised, but it's guaranteed to be nowhere near the end of it. Paleontologists just love to argue about this fascinating and enigmatic dinosaur, and the question of Spinosaurus' lifestyle really is one of the greatest currently unsolved dinosaur mysteries of the last decade. Let me know in the comments which side you're backing. Are you team wader or team diver? Or maybe you suspect that Spinosaurus was doing something else entirely. Like, I don't know, flying probably. Well, if you would like your very own Spinosaurus, aka vertebrate paleontologist's worst nightmare, we're very pleased to announce that you can make this possible. We've partnered with Plush Foundry on a campaign to bring you a delightful plushy version of this controversial dinosaur, which I've decided to call Swimbo in honour of the name that was suggested for the Field Museum Spinosaurus skeleton, but sadly was not chosen. Swimbo the Spinosaurus is absolutely adorable and features the classic M-shaped sail, plus it's even got the newt-like tail here with these expanded neural spines as you can see. And the details of the head are wonderful too, with the little crest above the eyes, and it's even got the expanded rosette shape of the upper jaw at the end here. This Swimbo is a prototype version of the plushie, and so if you'd like your own one, you'll first have to help us fund it. If you pre-order now, we can hopefully get enough interest to fully fund the campaign, which will last for a month from this video's upload, and then after that the plushies will be created and sent out to everyone who ordered one, and you should get them between 3-4 to four months after the campaign ends. These are limited edition plushies that won't be made again, so this is your only chance to get one. We need to have 150 pre-orders for these to be created, so share this around with anyone you know who might want their own accurate Spinosaurus plushie. So please check out the link in the description below to help make Swimbo a reality. I'd also like to give a huge thank you to Wonder Artistic Models for sending me these fantastic wooden models of the three versions of Spinosaurus to use in this video. I've spoken about Wonder before in my video on giant pterosaurs. They're a fantastic company based in Chile, creating some absolutely stunning wooden models of all sorts of living and extinct animals with super scientifically accurate anatomy. 
I would highly recommend that you check them out, they'll also be linked in the description below. These Spinosaurus models really are brilliant, I just love how they went with three different versions to cover all their bases. And they were so much fun to build too, it feels so rewarding to complete one of these. So thanks for watching, and again please do check out the links in the description.